reaction. <laughs> Hola, Maria. Hola. Again. <laughs> Again. It's been a minute. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, wine snobs, you probably remember Maria, um, cool blogger. Check her out on Cork Notes. Put the link below. Um, we did a segment, a couple of segments um, yeah, we, earlier in the year. We did one on uh, ferment. Yes. Oh yeah, we did ferment. Then we did open that bottle or something. Yeah. We did that um, Syrah. It was pretty old. And then I feel like we did something else. Um, well, been, we've been out and about. Yes. And then we've been country. to wine country. Yeah. Just wandering aimlessly, aimlessly looking for hidden gems. <laughs> So anyway, I haven't seen her in like months. So, uh, so we're like, we're talking and I'm like, you know what? I have these wines I've been putting together um, every time, every time I find one. Um, and I want us to take a look. I'm, I've been looking for someone to sit down and then go through them because they're interesting. And uh, orange wine, so that's the topic. <laughs> well, it's gonna be interesting. I have no nothing about orange wine, nothing. Um, but I did try it once, one. Okay. I don't even remember the name. <laughs> like, it was so awful. It was not memorable. I, I just like, didn't like it. I didn't get the hype around it. Cause like, I feel that the orange wine has been kind of like a new trend. Everybody's like super excited about it. Kind of replacing, uh, Rosé, but, um, I didn't get it. <laughs> I didn't get it at all. I stuck to my rosé. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're right. Um, it's an emerging trend. If you've never heard of it, I only heard of orange wine mere years ago, just a, a year or two ago. It was from one of my wine snobs in London. Um, she featured on the mulled wine segment. So check it out. I'll leave a link below. Um, and she was like, have, have you ever had orange wine? And I can't, I can't do a British accent. <laughs> and I thought it was fun. I was like, what is she talking about? Yeah. And so apparently it's like such a big thing. They have bars in London dedicated to orange wine. You walk in and it's just nothing but orange wine. What? Yeah. That is crazy. I know. So, well, what is orange wine? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, that was going to be my next question. He just stole my line, but it's fine. Um, can you tell us what it's orange wine? What's the process? Because usually it's a tweak in the process that makes a yeah. white a wine a different color, a different flavor. So what exactly is the process or why do we get orange wine? Because I'm seeing this um bottles <laughs> and we have different types of grapes we have vermentino we have pinot grigio even chardonnay yeah. so, so what makes it uh well uh orange wine is um there, it, as you pointed out it comes in all different shades but the general principle is it's a white wine typically a white wine mm -hmm. that um was allowed to have extended skin contact it makes yeah. sense. So they let the skin stay in. So some will leave it in for a few days. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than say pressing, uh, crushing, pressing and fermenting like a traditional white wine, they would let the skins in stay as if it was a red wine, but only for a few days okay. and then allow the fermentation to continue. So with that, with that being said, can we expect more of a stronger flavor of the grape? So it's interesting, and as you'll see tonight, I'm excited yes, to, run, to run these over your palate. But <laughs> as you'll see, um, because they let the skin stay in there, so you, some of the orange wines um, will develop characteristics that are more, or expressions that are a little more um, like a red wine. Like Walter. Like, like so the bodies tend to be fuller. Okay. And they tend to also have a little structure because I don't know, this may sound crazy, but there's tannins in those white skins. What? You know? I know. You're joking. Wait until. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought it was crazy until this, the last one tonight is going to change everything you take, everything you ever knew about <laughs> <laughs> Pinot Grigio and toss it out the window. Okay. Um, Cause so. I have like, if I, like if I close my eyes, I can taste the peanut grigio. Like the yeah. flavor profile is very standard. Yes. Right? There's 
there's like acidic, a component acidic, and it, mm -hmm. it has all these flavors yep. to it yep. that I'm excited to see how it's yeah. gonna change my so perception. So you get a little more leather in there, subtle. So it's like, think huh. of it like, it starts creeping into the territory of a light Pinot. So okay. you, you get a little rounder body, a little fuller, a little more weighty. Sometimes some would be uh, a little more viscous on the mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. You'll get longer finishes. Well, it, 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 it makes sense with the viscous because yeah. I guess the sugar gets a little yeah. heavier. Um, so I, I'm still exploring it. I'm no expert in in the uh, orange wines. I'm still, we are exploring it right here, right now. We're in the yeah, process. Yeah, like I said, I only carry <laughs> one and I shied away from them and I know I shouldn't do that. Um, I know, where right? I Always. tried once, I didn't like it and just throw it out the window. But here I am giving it a second chance. Let's we'll see if it changed my mind today. If you changed my mind today. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. So, um, the first one here that we have is a, um, an orange wine from uh, uh, Revolution Wines. So you say it's a skin fermented Vermentino and Revolution Wines is here in Sacramento. It's local, local. down the street. Yeah, so we got to rep the local scene. Um, uh, we were out there, you know, a couple months yeah, ago. earlier this year and uh, it was, uh, we had fun. It's, it's a cool place, cool vibe, you know, finger foods, little eats. Um, not many options for wine locally as far as if you want to stay in the city so it's nice it's always nice to have a tasting room available uh, the second one is honestly not just my favorite orange wine okay but it is one of my favorite wines period red or white wow yes and that's a lot to say for you I know I know I mean <laughs> I know I have issues, I know. You have a little bit of an issue. <laughs> Wine issues. Yeah. Um, but this is by Passaggio and it's a Pinot Grigio and uh, Cindy is out of Treasure Island, San Francisco. And I'm I have to take you to meet Cindy. And I'd she, love to meet her. I'm all about women in wine and... Here, here. And uh, so one thing that you would imme immediately notice about Cindy's wines is the colors are intense and just clear they're they're just mesmerizing they draw you in. so this one has this beautiful copper finish on it i think i could be off here um she had it for about uh, seven to eight days skin contact oh so you see a lot more it's of that long copper. for a white wine oh it gets better um okay <laughs> and the third one is from chateau de Vell, and this um I started tracking these guys when they were just a little shack by the roadside in Camino. Wow. And now they have their own little tasting room and it's totally like whimsical and decorated like it's kind of like a Alice in Wonderland fantasy world. Um, I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, owner winemaker is a great guy and uh, we gotta get out there too. Yeah, and I know, like this year, I think that my focus mainly is gonna be like that side of town. Like, yep. um, Summer is at Fair Play El Dorado. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been meaning to explore more those wineries up there. Uh, we went uh, over the summer to an event uh, up there and I just like fell in love with every winemaker that was at that event. Yeah. Um, so I, I, this is my goal for next year. So wait for more content uh, <laughs> about El Dorado. Heck yeah. And the last one. So I recently went to a trip out <laughs> this fall to Texas to explore Texas wines. I know, I know. I was wondering <laughs> what you got me. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. I remember the first time one of my um, wine snobs in Texas um, reached out to me at the beginning of the year and was like, hey, have you ever considered, you know, reviewing Texas wines? And honest, honest to God, I'll be honest, <laughs> my immediate impulse in my mind, you know, we no. were going on Texas, was, was, why is anyone making wine in Texas? Why? And, and so, and so, but you know, with Wine Snob, it's forced me, it's compelled me to always stay open-minded yep. and and explore off the beaten path because that's what I that's what I that's probably, your mission that's my thing that's my whole goal is to spend the rest of my life off the beaten path and <laughs> and so I was like whoa whoa hold on Brian you know you gotta 
you have to stay open-minded. And so, and so they were like, you know what, we'll send you some Texas wines. I was like, okay, sure, whatever. And so the wines came and I just kind of, you know, stacked them away in the cellar. And after a couple months, I finally pulled one out to take a look. I was like, all right, fine. Let's take a look at this Texas wines. And it caught me off guard. I was like, whoa, this is good. This is, good. <laughs> this is really good. So I was like, I, so I opened the next one and I was like, holy crap, this is really good. And I opened the next one. I was like, uh, I'm I, going might, to Texas. I might have to get out to Texas. So, <laughs> so this one I brought back, this is from, um, Texas high plains, but this, uh, winemaker, their tasting room is in hill country. This mm -hmm. is Newsome vineyards. It's a Pinot Grigio. And this one, this is the piece de resistance. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I have never seen. So we talk about orange wine in the in the context of yes, the color, but remember, orange wine is extended skin contact. Yeah. Uh, white wine. So this one, I could be off here, but I believe it's 18 months. Skin cont. Skin and everything. What? Like the whole skin, some stems, everything. So, so this has a lot of structure, a lot of body, a lot of complexity to it. Oh right? yeah. There isn't a Napa cab with this much structure. Wow. <laughs> it, I know. I'm it's anxious to get there then because yeah. uh, so, that's going to be interesting. So I was like, I got to bring a bottle back because um, you can't drink this like a regular wine. You almost have to just sip it like it's a scotch or something. Mm. So imagine a scotch without the alcohol or a whiskey without the alcohol. That's what this, it, and it has so much body. You have, you can only take it in small doses at a time. So it's really interesting, but it would give us a really wide range of what is possible with orange wine, orange wine or <laughs> white wine, grapes, you yeah, know, you like, let the skin in there. That's a Pinot Grillo, right? Right, yeah. But it, it will kind of like, I think for anyone who, explores this range the lights have to go on in their head like you know we don't always have to settle for your standard issue pinot grigio or standard issue chardonnay leave the skins in there a little bit yeah. see what happens you know play around give it a little body i think that's why a lot of people always make fun of me like oh you're always reviewing reds and it's just because i'm i don't really do a lot of whites because i like body in my wine yeah, when when I first started to try wines, I got to admit that I play more with reds because yeah. they have more layers to it usually yeah. or their flavor prof profiles are a little bit more complex. So it's more interesting to me. Yeah. But as I've been deeper in this journey, I got to admit that I have now my favorite white wines. And Pinot Grigio is luckily one of them, but um, yeah, I think Pinot Grigio is definitely one of uh, one of my preferred whites, just because it's it's a little less um, it's a little less aggressive on the palate, um, so it's a little softer, a little more subtle, um, not like your typical Chardonnay. You, oftentimes, yeah. you have to over oak a Chardonnay in order to make it gentle and, and interesting. Yeah, yeah. so. Right, so here's one. I'm gonna say it just smells delicious. No. Delicious. So we start with the Revolution Wines Vermentino. Ah, uh, that's a Vermentino. Oh yeah. Honeysuckle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mmm. Wet wood. I like it. It's very nice on the nose. Mm -hmm. I like, so I think that's what that extended contact does. It brings that wet wood. It makes it a little heavier. It's a subtle leather. It's not as pronounced, but. It's good. Yeah. The acidity is, is it's counteract. It's, yeah. it's a little. There's balance. Yeah, it's not the typical Pinot Grillo where you expect a lot of acidity mm -hmm. into it, but still have like enough to make it nice. Yeah, yeah like to make not it bright. Bright. Yeah, and and then there's a, I think that skin contact adds a little fuller body to kind of counteract and weight, add some weight to the body and bring it 
bring it kind of back down to earth. Mmm, that's refreshing. It has a very um, strong taste of watermelon. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the back, especially the towards back the finish. And the back, especially towards the finish. It's like, like cantaloupe. It's not, yep, yeah, kind of like yeah. cantaloupe, but yeah. watermelon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Hmm. That's why I take her everywhere with me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to try the next one? Yeah, before I drink it <laughs> yes. all. You, you know what I like about extended skin contact wine, uh, white wines is you can, they're enjoyable at a broad range of temperatures. They don't always have to be super chilled or anything. You can open them at room temperature and you yeah, can just Yeah, I gotta say, it. this has been sitting here for a while right. <laughs> while, while we yeah. were getting ready. I mean, but the cellar is only like 50 something degrees in the winter I just let it you know, the, go down, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's 50 something now. So that's already cool enough, but yeah, compared to. But still, I mean, it's pretty nice. Yeah. All right. Let's see, this is your favorite. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is more, uh, I believe this is from Clarksburg area. Um, and so you get a lot more of that loamy sedimentary river, um, fine silt leather on the nose. Smells delicious. Wow. Yeah. I'm just gonna say wow. <laughs> you like what she did there? Yeah. Because this is a very different wine yes. from anything I ever taste. Yeah. Right. That's why I that that's why I fell it in has love with it. So many layers to it. <laughs> um, would you taste first? Would you let it sit then and then the aftertaste? That's just a different flavor profile all throughout. Yeah. Yeah, she's done an amazing job. Um, I think this is probably one of her most misunderstood wines because people look at it and they don't know what to think, um, and because it doesn't fall into one of the different categories and mm -hmm. you know the different boxes it's very different it's very unique um so much so that i think this is the only vintage she's gonna make it she's not gonna make it like this anymore what i know so i need to rush down there before i post this and <laughs> buy whatever is left <laughs> yes um it's a very very nice wine it's definitely not the typical pinot grillo no. um that is nice. That color, look at that color. That color is gorgeous. Wow. That's incredible. I did a review below, I'll post the link uh, below as well. I've reviewed it previously on the blog. It's just amazing. I mean, if you're having a bad day, just come home and open this. And if you're having a good day, just come home and open it. Celebrate and just to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't, even, I can't even comment on the notes that are on this bottle. Because yeah. I can, I can pinpoint yeah. a, a specific flavor, but it's a, it's just a very great and well balanced experience. Yeah. It's yeah. like an experience. It's not even a take, a flavor. Yeah. It's just an experience. <laughs> nice. So it's not just me. Yay. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far as my favorite wine okay. ever. Yeah. Well, okay. Maybe I was being a little dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> Uh, it's right up there. Right up there? Yeah. It's one of my favorite, yeah, for sure. Um, right up there with uh, the Chardonnay from Chile, from Atacama Desert. Mm. Have I opened one of those for no. you yet? Ooh, that one, yeah. That's it's another on one. It's on camera now. <laughs> yeah. He opened a Chardonnay <laughs> yeah. from the Atacama Desert. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I think I think I think it would be worth it. Um, you would appreciate it. It's one of those like just like this. Yes. It would it would like it would just catch you off guard. You'd be like, whoa, what is that? That's a Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. Where is it from? The driest place on earth. Yeah. <laughs> um, ready to check out the rest? Sure. All right. So these these we're gonna go ahead and Coravin because unless you really like them, then we'll open them. But we have no, enough here. No, I just need to. Okay. So here we are. We're having the Chateau de Vell. Um, Reserve Chardonnay, and that color is even more orange than the Vermentino yeah. Revolution. 
wild that no. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's sweet. Some, yeah, it's oak. That's American oak. It's very sweet yeah, and some, oaky. Yeah. Buttery. Yeah, lots of oak vanilla in there. Vanilla is definitely the predominant one. That's funny, the oak doesn't come through on the body. Not as much. No. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It is buttery though. Yes, yes. It is very buttery, buttery. Yeah. it's very smooth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It tends to be on the, on the like sweeter side, yeah. I would say. But if I'm being quite honest, mm -hmm. There are certain characteristics of a Chardonnay I don't really like. I don't. I'm not crazy about a Chardonnay at all. Yeah. And this process get reads of all the bad stuff in a Chardonnay. <laughs> essentially. I agree. Yeah. The things that I don't, you know, it's very astringent. It's it's too sharp. It's too harsh on the palate. It's it's too harsh of a finish sometimes yeah. in yeah. a Chardonnay. Yeah. I really think Chardonnay should be allowed more skin contact. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think. There's just been this tradition, you know, holdover from the old ways of doing things, you know, a lot of these white wines, and you just keep doing them the same way, like everybody else, which is to have this pure, crisp, you know, et cetera. But very often it ends up being overbearing. You have too much acidity, or sometimes they get over oaked, and mm -hmm. there's too much secondary malolactic fermentation. And then there's no body to counteract and lift it up. Right. Whereas with the extended skin contact, you get body to kind of firm it and keep it still intact, you know? Yeah, I, like, I never, almost never, so I'm not gonna say never, I've bought very good Chardonnays, but I would definitely get one of these home. Like, yeah. I would enjoy it on a hot day or in the summer. Yeah. Um, or winter. Or winter for like, yeah. These are winter whites. These are winter whites. <laughs> um, but I really enjoy that it gets rid of like the yeah. harsh parts of the Chardonnay. Yeah, I agree. I'm right there with you. So you ready for the pièce de résistance? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta watch this. We have. We need a uh, drum roll. <laughs> I'll I'll edit the drum roll and okay. Yeah, thank you. Make a make make right. a go <laughs> Drum roll. <laughs> All right, look this color. Yeah, look at that color. You know, it it looks like flat. It's brown. Coke. It's like it's like cola. Yeah. Yeah, Coca it looks like yeah. flat Coca-Cola. Yeah. <laughs> like I immediately pull away the glass from my nose because it's yeah. so it's big. Intense, yeah. It's very, it's very thick. intense. It's thick. Mm -hmm. And it's only eleven percent. So this is the mildest. Like honestly, um, with this nose, and and I'm gonna proceed to try it afterwards. <laughs> but I would almost say it's very, very, very sweet and very thick. But we'll see. Okay. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> it's okay. It I have nothing to say. <laughs> it's okay. I had the same reaction too. <laughs> yep. Just like I remember it. Yeah. You sit this all by yourself quietly. <laughs> yes. And you have this much and that's it. If that. It's a very unique wine. Yeah. I've never tried something like that. Yeah, me neither. That's why I had to have this. I had and to and I think it. it's more of an acquired taste that you may be able to develop a taste for it over time. Personally, it's too... I don't think too complex for me. Yeah, it's too tannic. Yeah, it's too tannic. I mean, you can feel tannic. it grip your your palate. It's. I don't think this it's necessarily. It's not for everybody. Yeah, I don't think this is an, for an acquired. I don't think I'm ever going to acquire this taste. Um, 
There's certain wines that I keep because they do something so different and so radical that they're, it's like having a textbook on a certain specific subject. Yes. You know, you, have, you just have to have it because every once in a while the conversation will come up and you're like, hold that thought. I have a wine for yeah, that. I want, I, like, I want to show you the most radical thing I've seen as far as wine goes and this is it. Yeah, um, I have no words to describe it. It's just a very overwhelming reaction in your palate, your nose. Uh, it's very intense. I like, I, like you said, I don't think I can acquire a taste for this. I think it's you either love it or hate it. Right. And that's it, it's black or white. Yeah, I mean, there's wines that I'll have um, in the cellar that I'll keep and I actually collect. Um, not necessarily because I like them. Yeah. This one, I would never pour this one because, oh, I like it. I'm, I, no. I pour it so I can marvel at what happens to Pinot Grigio when you leave the skins in. <laughs> you know, I was expecting something completely different because yeah. you were all excited about it. And I was like, maybe this is like one of the best wines I ever gonna have. But it's definitely a, something really different. Yeah. And um, something I probably wouldn't pour or yeah. just sit and enjoy a glass. Honestly, yeah. I... So if you're ever in Texas, you gotta get out to the Texas Hill Country. It's outside, a couple hours outside of um, Austin, Texas. And, and when you do, uh, stop by Newsome Vineyards. Small, understated uh, tasting room, but they have an amazing library of wines and their library serves more as a, a reference for what is possible with different varietals. Oh, good. Especially from the High Plains where they're, I think they're third or fourth generation growers. Um, so it's been in the family. And one thing I noticed was every winery that I um, visited and tasted had a Newsome Vineyards wine or several Newsome Vineyards wines. So they only, pr they only keep about 2% of their production. So they are growers oh. first. And then the tasting room serves as a reference. Like here's what the Merlot can be like. Here's what the Cab can be like. And their style is very old world style. So low alcohol, um, big structure, tannins and complexity. Um, you know, age-worthy wines. A little earthy. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, it was really refreshing to run into that out in seemingly the middle of nowhere. You know, it was just really um, oh. awesome. Awesome people. Uh, check them out. Um, but, and when you go take a bottle of this back with you, if they still have it. Again, this was a one-time vintage. Yeah. So um, things like this are more experiments by the winemaker, um, you know, to, to kind of push the envelope. So that's basically essentially what he did here because the following vintage, he the skins were only in there, I think, for maybe a, a week or so. And honestly, I am all about innovation and pushing the envelope and, and doing something and challenging the status quo. And it's, it's good to be there and witness it and like what they're doing, what they're trying to do, what a great yeah. do and yeah. they get exposed <laughs> to skin more than usual. And so I'll definitely let you know when I'm reviewing another Newsome because I brought back at least a case of um, assorted different wines. So we definitely have to open one of their say Merlots or Cabs. I may be back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe we'll do a couple of them. We'll core in a couple. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think you'd be really pleasantly surprised. Um, but yeah, that's another segment. So, orange wines today. We had the Vermentino, we had the Pinot Grigio, and we had the Chardonnay, and then we had the, I mean, used to be a Pinot Grigio. Um, <laughs> So look at that color again. I mean, the second, the second or boldest would probably be this one, but it's still a far cry. Away. Yeah. So this you want to drink maybe in one ounce pours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They should have put this with like a whiskey stopper or something on it. But it's actually the mildest of them all at 11.3% alcohol. Um, you almost don't taste the alcohol, but the body is so massive. It is f just this tannic grit. Yeah. Um, which is amazing because conventional wisdom would tell you 
white grapes don't have tannins. It's like, no, well, yeah, sure, but they're still grapes and those tannins still exist in the grape skins. The difference is most white wines never see the skins. So they remove yeah. the skins earlier, they don't sit there. And, and you uh, said this one is the one they sit with like everything? Everything. So just that's why too, like food, yeah. some of the tannins also come from the vine itself. Right. Yeah. So they're keeping some of the stems in it. It, it comes, from the, the different flavor comes from all of that, not only the grape, yeah. uh, but also that those stems that are kept in the, and the skin. And, and aged for 18 months with everything. With everything, yeah, which is very <laughs> unusual because yes. Even with the red wines, most of them just sit with the skin, yeah. stem here the and there. The first two weeks and yeah. then they press and then it goes into secondary fermentation for another month or two months. Yeah, without the skin. This so. thing sat on the skins for 18 months. That, that was, is a little crazy. Yeah, that is definitely way out there. And uh, I, I love crazy stuff like that. You know, um, winemakers who have nothing to lose. You know, there's, they don't care about prestige or pomp or snobbery. I like that. Yeah, they just they, do it. They want to push the envelope, and you end up with wines like this. You know, actually, all of these. All I mean, of it. They're just amazing takes. This is an amazing take on a Chardonnay. I mean, and the Vermentino is just interesting. It's different. It's different. Yeah. I love it. I love so if you had to, if you had to take one, if you had to take a second pour of one tonight, which would it be? In all honesty, yeah, <laughs> the Chardonnay. The Chardonnay. Whoa! And I would never ever say that. Yeah. You know me. <laughs> um, but uh, definitely the Chardonnay. I think that it brings the best of the grape and uh, it showcases a different, completely different flavor, flavor profile and without taking away the buttery. I, yeah. I like a good buttery Chardonnay and without taking that good characteristic of it, it highlights some other flavors that are not normally in a Chardonnay. Yeah, that's re yeah it's, it's really smooth, I like it. Hmm. Yeah, I think it'll be between that and my favorite. Ooh, I definitely too. have a clay winner. Yeah. It's my delicious. Try the Pinot Grigio again. What a good Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, they're pretty close. They're, they're different. pretty, they're different. So it's hard to compare because. The Chardonnay actually has a bigger body. It does. It does. And, and they are very different. So it's like comparing literally apples yeah. to grapes. Nothing to do with each other. So there you have it, wine snobs. Orange wine. Have you ever had orange wine? Let Comment us know. Below. Yep, let us know. We want to know. Where did you find it? Because obviously we don't have orange wine bars here yet. So it's not that popular yet. The trend hasn't yet caught on fully, but I am seeing more and more of them as we're out there. So yeah. um, if you know of a winemaker, if you're a winemaker making orange wine, get in touch with Wine Snob. We want to highlight and uh, talk about your wine. Um, but yeah, there it is. Orange wine. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. Always for, a pressure. Thank you for joining in. This Always is where a pleasure the fun to is. be here. <laughs> I knew there was a reason I was collecting all these little bottles all year long. Oh, I know they're gonna come in handy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Salud. Salud. And cut. cut.